Well, that was pretty special, wasn't it? Huh? That was a special moment, special time. Let's just, I mean, I, come on. Um, the testimonies this morning from Jerry uh, and Chip and uh, the discussion during the, the round tables, um, uh, Holy Spirit's just blowing me away already, blowing us away. Um, and as you've been sitting here listening to these messages, I know we've heard from the crowd a couple of times, the audience that's here, and um, for those of you that are watching online, I can't help but think that the Holy Spirit is maybe stirring something in our hearts, stirring something that um, he's wanted you to work on or wanted you to give to him. And it's these convictions that come as we run the race. And I want to I ask this question. What areas of your life have you not turned over to Jesus just yet? What areas of your life have we not turned over to Jesus just yet? You see, this amazing race, this amazing race that Jesus wants us to run, as Jess mentioned earlier, it's not always easy. It's not something that we just go through. We just talked about uh, after the game, after somebody retires, after losing a contract. It's not easy. It takes sacrifice. It takes commitment. It takes total devotion. And I've had this charge probably over the last year in my life that he wants all of us. He wants all of our hearts, not just bits and pieces of us. Let me share a little bit about my own race. Some of you have heard this, some of you haven't, but I was the one foot in, one foot out type of Christian for a really, really, really long time. Jess can tell you about that. I claimed Jesus when it was really convenient for me, easy to do. Hey, yep, I, I'm a, I love Jesus, blah, 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 over here with this group. And then I'd come over here and I would be with the worldly crowd and hang out with them for quite a while when it was convenient. It was about convenience for me. Now, by no means am I saying that as Christians, we shouldn't hang out with tax collectors and sinners as Matthew did, uh, or as Jesus did with Matthew at his house after he calls him. I'm not saying that. He requires that of us, in fact, and we talked a lot about that up here. But what I am saying is we just can't claim Jesus when it's convenient for us. We, we can't just make it, like Jess said, it can't be a side salad. We can't just make it this idea of convenience. Now, one of the best things to happen to Jess and me and our entire family uh, was these lockdowns and shutdowns because of COVID-19. Now, I know there was a lot of challenges with that, and we're still going through many of them now. But he took our family, and he went like this. Boom. Stop. Done. Can't do anything. And if you know me, I, I mean, <laughs> I have a really hard time sitting still. <laughs> right, Jess? I mean, I have a really hard time sitting still. I got to be doing something all the time. I've, I've learned a little bit about that. But he, he made us stop. No more running from game to game. Basketball stopped. It was all over with. No running from camp to camp to camp all summer long. Not, no youth sport to youth sport. They were all shut down. We all, we all went through this. And God wanted that for me, and he wanted that for our family. And, and I, I didn't know it at the time, but what he did from mid-March of 2020 to now was a deepening and an understanding of what a relationship with Jesus Christ truly meant. It was no longer just friendship. Now, friendship is good with Jesus. I'm not saying to not have a friendship with Jesus, but it went from friendship to intimacy. It went from fandom to follower. And maybe some of you here can relate to this a little bit. I want to get real for a minute about, about the race we're running for Jesus. And this is a verse that I've almost made it. I, I, I don't really like to use the term life verse because I think it all breathes life into us. But this verse is just something that's been laid on my heart over the last year. Luke 9, 23. I think they're going to put it up on the screen here. And he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. God wants all of you. God wants all of you. Just, just, sit and let, just sit here for like five seconds. Just let that sink in. He wants all of us. He doesn't want one foot over here on the worldly race. We're talking about race today. He doesn't want us one foot over here on the worldly race. And then we come over to this side and we put one foot on the Jesus race. That's not what he wants. He wants all of us. He wants us to follow him. He doesn't want fandom. He doesn't want us to cheer for him. I mean, he probably likes that, but he doesn't want us to cheer for him. He loves the glorification. That's what we're supposed to do in our life. But he wants us to truly follow him. He wants intimacy. 
In Acts chapter 5, one of my favorite uh, chapters in the Bible, we see the Holy Spirit's work on full display uh, in a couple different ways here. Signs and wonders happening all over the place, right? I mean, the the Holy Spirit had just come upon uh, the apostles in Pentecost in the upper room. Signs and wonders everywhere. And Ananias, and I learned how to say that last night, so thank you, Alika. Ananias and Sapphira had just lied about keeping back proceeds of their land, and then all of a sudden, boom, dead on the spot. Dead on the spot, breathe their last within three hours. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Real encouraging, right? The people of the time would just lay cots in the street. They just put their cots out there to hope to be caught in Peter's shadow. The Holy Spirit was on full display. Now, all of this causes the apostles of the time to get thrown into jail. Anybody been thrown in jail for their faith yet here today? Okay, all right. They get thrown in jail and leads it, and then the angel of the Lord breaks them out, says, get them out of here, gets them out, and they're out preaching again, and all of a sudden, this leads to a a conversation, which I think is more probably like a confrontation with the high priest in Acts 5.28. He says this to to Peter. He goes, we strictly charge you not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. I want us all to listen to Peter's response in verse 29 and beyond. We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers, the God of our fathers who raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging on a tree, God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. God wants obedience. Now, I think... I think in today's society, obedience gets a bad rap, right? I I think we all, bad reputation, we all could agree with that. It's this all about me, you do you society, the rat race that we talked about earlier, achieve, 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 good friend of mine, I'll just give you credit, KB told me this earlier this week, he says, when we were talking about this, it's achieve, 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 but then there's Jesus. Jesus wants us to achieve him, achieve relationship with him, not earn our way to heaven, but be fully committed to him. That stuck with me when you said that. God is asking us all to run a different race. If the apostles, by the power of the Holy Spirit, can, after being thrown in jail, like I just, the the room, nobody's been thrown in jail. After being thrown in jail, we must obey God rather than men, is what they say. Can't we do the same? Well, yeah, nay, but 2,000 years ago, this is 2,000 years ago. How does this apply to today? How is this relevant in my life He wants the same commitment today that he got from the apostles. We might suffer. We might rebel. Heck, I've had a ton of rebellion. I've ruined relationships in my life. I have messed up things. Jess was with me. We'll talk about that a little bit more later for many of these huge mistakes I've messed up. I've yelled and screamed at people. I've done a lot of stupid things. But Stephen was stoned after his speech in Acts 7. Peter was crucified upside down. Paul, who was there at Stephen's stoning, was persecuting Christians, was killing Christians as Saul prior to his conversion on the road to Damascus. I know this all seems really encouraging, but I really think it is when we look at it. God used ordinary people. He used tax collectors. He used sinners. He used fishermen. And he wants to use sports officials. But he wants all of our lives. He wants all of it. He wants obedience. And he wants commitment. Now, this verse I'm about to read is funny how God works. Just said it already about different things that have happened throughout the day. Chip reads this verse, and I was hoping he wouldn't start, stop on uh, verse 11, and he did, and he kept going, verse 12. And it's like Jeremiah 29, 11. It's famous. You see it in houses. It's all over the place. But what we forget about when we read Jeremiah 29, 11 is that it's right before the Israelites are going to go into Babylonian exile for 70 years. False teachers of the time were talking about two years, three years, all these different things. But Jeremiah says, no, you're actually going to be there for 70 years, but God knows the plans. 
And then if we read verse 12 and 13, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Here's the famous verse. Plans for welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Call upon him. Pray to him. He will hear you. Seek him. Find him. Seek him with all of our heart. So as we head into lunch today, what a, what a morning it's been. I, I, it's been incredible. Here's a couple of questions I want to leave us all with. And, and just let the Holy Spirit work on our hearts as we, we spend that time in fellowship at lunch. Maybe run them by a, a friend of yours that's here with you here today. Or online, maybe text somebody or reach out to somebody on the phone. The first question is, are you just a fan of Jesus or are you a follower? Are you like I used to be, the one foot in, one foot out Christian that followed Christ because of convenience? Or maybe you're the one foot in and three quarters of the way in, which leads to the second point and the second question. What specific area of your life today is God calling you to turn over to him? What specific area is he calling you to turn over to him? What, what sin have you been dabbling in? Maybe hiding it. The world doesn't really want to talk about sin, but what sin have, have, have you been dabbling in? Have you not allowed the Holy Spirit to come in and take care of for you? And then maybe it's not sin, but what piece of your life do you want to not even bring up to God? What, what piece of your life do you not want him to even be a part of? And the third question is, whether you're here in person today or you're watching online, is if you haven't fully committed your life to Jesus Christ yet, why not? What is holding you back from a full-on, fully committed, fully devoted race with Jesus? Maybe you feel like you've been running alone. But as we head to lunch today, let's just ponder these three questions and, and let the Holy Spirit work on our hearts and open up and show us what he wants to reveal to us through these three questions. Let's pray. Father God, I am, we were expectant. We knew that you were going to be here, and Lord, you have showed up in so many ways this morning. We're so thankful for your presence here in this place, Lord. And Lord, as we head into lunch, uh, I, just, I just thank you. I thank you for what you've done, for who you are. And Lord, as Pat and Darren come up here shortly, I just thank you for them in starting this great conference so that we could all be here together in person and online to glorify you. And I pray that you work on hearts, Lord, as we sit through the lunch hour and spend time in community with each other, Lord. Just reveal to us what you want to reveal to each person in this place and online today. In your great name, amen.